Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Random Red Shirt Podcast. I am one of the hosts, Zach, and the other host is Chris. What's up, Chris? Hello, Zach. Awesome to see you again, my great friend. Hello, everyone on the interwebs. Thank you very much for joining us around the world in our galaxy. Yes. Yeah, and, and we're going to take a trip to the galaxy far, far away, aren't we? <laughs> far, far away. A long time ago. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you who uh, this is your first time joining us, watching us or listening to us, uh, welcome the Random Red Shirt Podcast. Uh, we are just two nerdy guys who like things all nerdy, Star Trek, Star Wars, and everything in between. We talk a lot about Trek, but we also talk about Star Wars like we're going to right now, and other science fiction, and a little dabble of pop culture here and there. Uh, and so if you have never heard of us or seen us or whatever, be sure to go to Facebook and Instagram. You can find us there. Just search for the Random Red Shirt Podcast. You can also find us on your favorite podcast platform as well as YouTube if you're listening. And be sure to subscribe, follow, whatever there for all of our latest announcements and new episode contents uh, coming soon. So uh, with that being said, we're jumping into Star Wars. We have not been to Star Wars for a while, and it's kind of cool. We, we talked about this before, mm -hmm. Chris. We talked about it, let, let people that have been watching and listening know that we were going to be reviewing Ahsoka uh, episode by episode. So we're going to start out with episode number one. It's very interesting how, uh, at least on Disney+, Plus, they label the episodes part one and part two, but then in the episode itself, it actually gives you a title. Like, I think episode number one part, or part one, episode number one, whatever you want to call it, I think it was titled like Master and Apprentice. Yes, it is titled Master and Apprentice. I like that so, title. I like yeah, that title. I, I, but I don't know why. Why didn't they put that name on Disney Plus? Like, why, why, why just call it part one? Why not call it oh. Master and Apprentice? Yeah, that's a it's good bizarre question. to me. Yeah, it is. It is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes those decisions? I no. don't know. Yeah, certainly not us. That's yeah. for sure. I know I they know. didn't consult the Random Retro Podcast. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. Hard. this. This is this is going to be fun. Um, we we just got done what uh watching and doing an episode by episode review of Star yeah. Trek: Strange New World season two. So if you have not watched those, you can find all of the episode reviews on our YouTube channel as well as your favorite podcast platform. If you want to catch up, if you haven't had a chance to listen to reviews yet of that show, uh, as well as we also did an overall season review of that. We have reviewed other Star Wars shows though too, Chris. Yeah, we have. We have. Um, you know, we've reviewed uh, the Mandalorian, which you know I think that and Bubba Fett. Or did we review the Mandalorian? No, we, we didn't do Mandalorian. Didn't, uh, no, yeah, no. we reviewed Bubba Fett, and we had some. We had very similar opinions on um, on Bubba Fett. You know, we thought we thought Bubba Fett had a lot more potential than what we saw. You know, and yeah, 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 and we were always still on Tatooine. Like, there's got to be other other planets in this in this galaxy. Then don't even get me started on that show. I yeah. but I will say though, like. I think you were absolutely right. I think we mm -hmm. we definitely agreed that that there was a lot left to be desired with the book of Boba Fett. Like it's yeah. just I, I I don't really feel from a fan perspective. I don't feel like they treated that character maybe as maybe as well as they should have. Um, yeah. I I, I did I did find like I wasn't against the whole hanging out and and like becoming a member of the Tuscan Raider clan or tribe or whatever, and then you know. Um, going from there but to just stay there and be like oh i'm just gonna take over job as old you know uh neighborhood and and run that i to me that was like eh. i've kind of felt like that's been that's been done before you know the whole job of the hut tatooine gangster it's all been done before like and the idea that Boba fett wanted to become some peace loving money making gangster and not actually yeah. a bounty hunter anymore when that's ingrained into him just because he fell in the sarlacc pit i mean i don't know uh, no I know what you're saying. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I buy that. It, you know, we've had. You know, there's been like several Star Wars series now that have been on Disney Plus. Right? We've had. We we both watched Kenobi and. Um, and, and we did review that. Kenobi too. We did review yep. Kenobi. Yeah. Yep. Um. And and Andor. And we reviewed Andor. Yep. Yeah. And I think we had. Yeah, and Andor. You know. Um. Yeah. You. For our audience, please go back and listen to our, our review on Andor. But I think you know, I felt mixed on, on Andor. Um, yeah. I think some people really loved it, but there were some parts that we didn't really care for. And then, you know, al although we didn't review Mandalorian on the show, I know we've both watched. Uh, you've I think you've watched more than I have of Mandalorian. because Yeah, I've watched all the seasons, all three yeah. seasons. Um, I'm caught up on, on Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, because it was funny, like, me explaining to you, like, why I couldn't finish Mandalorian season three. I just got caught up on one episode, and I'm like, come on, man, what's going on? And then I was, I just didn't go back. Yeah, I mean, 
I, I, I don't think season three was maybe as successful as the first two seasons of Mandalorian. Um, I, even my kids who love the first two seasons were kind of so, so on season three. Um, but, but yeah, a- going back really quickly to Andor, Andor was, mm-hmm. I heard people say that it was like Star Wars for grownups and it's like, well, Star Wars has been for grownups since it came out. I mean, yeah. I know George Lucas originally wrote Star Wars to appeal to 12 year olds, but it's always appealed to everybody. So to say that, oh, Andor is like an adult Star Wars, I don't buy that. I mean, I do think there were some really good things about Andor, um, but I just felt like it left it left a lot to be desired. Like, I feel like there, there's also more stuff they could have done with that that have been a lot better than just, it was just really, really slow. And it took forever to get to the point on stuff. Mm-hmm. But anyways, go back and watch our reviews of that. Go back and watch our, or listen to our reviews of Book of Boba Fett and you'll see what we're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it, w- w- with Star Wars and, and we've talked about this before way back in the day, <laughs> like, Right, like within the first couple of episodes, I believe, of our podcast, when we first started back in 2021, uh, we talked about whether or not, you know, Disney has ruined Star Wars, whether or not um, uh, Star Wars is in a good place now and so forth. And this is this was, I think, I, I think this was before The Mandalorian came out or maybe it was no, maybe Mandalorian came out not long after that. I don't remember how yeah. everything lined up date wise, but. Um, I definitely feel like it's been kind of hit or miss. Yeah. You know, there's been some good stuff. I think that Disney's made as far as star Wars goes. And then they've been some real bad stuff. It was really, I mean, it really feels like after, um, the new trilogy, which will not be named, but af- <laughs> after the, the new trilogy and the third movie of the new trilogy, you know, it just felt like what is going on. And then they were just trying to find their footing ever. Well, trying to find their footing ever since after, um, the last Jedi. Or the yeah. um, the rise of Skywalker, rise of the third one, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I know I know people loved love that at least those first two episodes of Mandalorian, and right rightfully so because I think Mandalorian was probably the best uh, thing to come out after the rise of Skywalker. Other than Rogue One, yeah. I mean, I yeah, yeah. Ro- yeah. Rogue One, I. I can't remember the dates off the top of my head, but it was like Rogue One and 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 um the four well the first movie mm-hmm. that shall not be named I guess oh we can say that <laughs> one because that one's okay Force Awakens right um those two came out within a year of each other I believe yeah I want to say I want to yeah. say Force yeah. Awakens came out first in 2015 yeah. I want to say and then 2016 I think was Rogue One yeah to me Rogue One is one of the best Star Wars movies of all time I I, I just it's so good and that's what spawned. Andor and Jyn Erso and all those other characters, right? Yeah, I um, thoroughly enjoyed Rogue One. Um, a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was different, so but it was different in a good way. Yeah, really, really good. Um, so you know, if you want to kind of hear our discussion about you know the new trilogy and Disney and Star Wars and everything like that, be sure to go way back to when we first started. Mm-hmm. It's in season one of our podcast. Within the first few episodes, it's t- entitled "Has Disney Ruined Star Wars?" Where we really dive into uh i think our hatred for the new trilogy but also talking about things we think should have been better and so forth and and apparently the, the disney's announced i too uh, i think that they're talking about doing another star wars trilogy with ray as the lead and this is nothing against daisy ridley she's a great actress but did you not learn the first time disney i mean come on i i mean m- maybe they've got a new idea but but the new trilogy why it was so bad because it just they didn't feel like they have any direction they were just making crap up and because they had no direction they were just bringing in old stuff trying to fan appeal to you know people who have been who've been fans since the original trilogy and it just didn't work yeah yeah i had heard that they're thinking about either thinking or already planning the new a new trilogy with daisy ridley so um we'll see maybe there's maybe there's potential but i i I think for them they just they really need to get some maybe different people different people involved with some some fresh ideas that where they're not they're not tied to this you know the skywalker it's got to be completely different you know if they try and tie to skywalker then that's just so hard to hard to do yeah I, I, absolutely uh 100 agree with you i think there's there's so much so many things they could have done better that there's so many different eras within the star wars timeline that they could have went after that didn't have much content mm-hmm. to be fresh and they just they just went after the skywalker stuff and i 
felt like that was pretty lazy, but yeah. All right. But we're here to talk about Ahsoka. All right. So uh, episode one and two of Ahsoka, the two-parter, um, gives us this Ahsoka and she used to be a Jedi. And then you're getting these, uh, the, these, these, these scoundrels, these, uh, you know, bad people basically being assembled by a character named Morgan Elsbeth. We met her the first time in Mandalorian. Uh, the first time she showed up and the grand prize for getting to this map mm -hmm. is being able to find grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, if you're a star Wars fan, you know that grand Admiral Thrawn's first appearance was in heir to the empire written by mm -hmm. Timothy Zahn. So Timothy Zahn uh, was the creator, I believe of Thrawn. I think you're and, right. Yeah. yeah. And so this is, his, this is the first time you hear about this, this Thrawn character. Um, and of course Thrawn and the heir to the empire sets up the expanded universe, right? This is, I believe heir to the empire. If I'm not mistaken is like kind of, it's like the jumping point in that trilogy uh, into the the expanded universe because this heir to the empire takes place not long after Return of the Jedi. I think you're right. Yeah, pretty, um, pretty close. It's yeah. been a it's been a while since I've read the first book, Heir to the Empire. So I I think I'm Same. gonna have to go back. Yeah, yeah, I, I've got it up there. I started reading it and I I had to put it down and like many other excuses <laughs> for reading books. I've always books over here. I've started and haven't finished them. I'll get there eventually. But um, but yeah, so so Grand Admiral Thrawn, this 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 Ahsoka show is really being based around it. And my understanding is the guy who voiced Thrawn in uh Star Wars Rebels mm -hmm. is the same guy who's gonna be the live action version of Thrawn in this show. A guy by the name of Lars Mickelson or something like that. Not not to be con not to be confused with Mads Mickelson, who was um Galen or so and uh Lashif in in Casino Royale and stuff different. I don't think they're related, I don't think. Um, but what we understand is from the Star Wars lore and everything that that Grand Admiral Thrawn was basically like the top strategist guy and mili military tactician advisor to Palpatine. And he disappears um before the events of a new hope and then at the end of star wars rebel rebels ezra bridger uh comes up with some kind of last second you know plan to defeat him and he this so this jedi you know padawan um is a gets this flock of pergil i think is what it's called they're basically like space whales to whisk Thrawn's flagship off into hyperspace and he's been missing ever since and also Ezra was on board that flagship at the time so he's gone which is why you see in the show you see um Sabine missing him so much in that little hollow emitter yeah and apparently my understanding is depending on where supposedly Ahsoka fits in the timeline and I guess that's up for debate um my understanding is is this that this show Ahsoka is supposed to take place somewhere about nine ish years. Um, after return of the Jedi. Mm. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I knew it was, I that's what I read. Yeah. I knew it was after return of the Jedi. Um, and it seemed like it should, I mean, I mean, obviously the new Republic had to be formed, right? So it had right. to be a little bit after they had time to form the new Republic. Yeah. Um, but there's still a lot of, um, you know, what we learned through, through these first couple episodes, still a lot of people loyal to the empire. So there's still, Oh stuff, yeah. Right. So, so within that time frame where the empire is still fresh in people's minds and there's still feelings of loyalty from people that formerly served in the empire. Yeah. And um, it would make sense, right? Because if you think about it at the time of the, 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 the power of the galactic empire, which is the original trilogy, right? They would have been so massive and had so many people everywhere. I mean, even look at Andor, right? I mean, in Andor, we see that that they're everywhere. There's Im imperial officers, stormtroopers. The Empire's presence is vast, reaching. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it makes sense to find, you know, random stragglers who are still trying to keep the Empire going. You know, now that you just mentioned Andor, this it brings up like some something of interest to me because since since we've got all these shows on on Disney Plus. 
um, you mentioned the timeline just made me think, yeah, um, when does Andor take place? When does Ahsoka take place? When does the trilogy take place? That's a lot, a lot to keep track of, right? You know, um, yeah, yeah, it really is. And one thing I noticed, and I, it, having doing some reading and research before I watched the show, mm-hmm. was that uh, a lot of people are saying that Ahsoka is not for. Ahsoka is the show for like super hardcore Star Wars fans, people who have watched everything. They know all the details. They know, you know, if you haven't watched everything, then there's going to be a lot of stuff you miss. You might be confused. Uh, So I kind of went out and tried to find some videos that would kind of catch me up quick as far as like events and things that are important to this. On Disney Plus, there's also listed out a bunch of star Wars rebels episodes to go watch that are important to the, this Ahsoka series. So they actually give you, and they're across the span of the seven seasons. They give you these important episodes that are critical points in Ahsoka's life. And it, in, in clone wars and rebels that are key to watching Ahsoka. So if you haven't seen all of it, that could be a good starting point. We found a good YouTube video. That's got, um, you know, things to, things to, uh, you know, no before watching Ahsoka. That's a good one. We'll have to post that maybe on our on our uh, social media pages so you can check it out. But yeah, um, definitely some good things there. So I'm glad you mentioned those because I need to go back and and look at those. Um, that'll refresh my memory. Like the first time, probably for both of us, I remember seeing Star Wars Clone Wars when it came out. Right. And that that was the the animated Clone Wars, and that was the introduction of Ahsoka. And it was really cool. I mean, I remember that being really cool. Um, But after that initial Clone Wars movie, you know, I did not keep up with the Clone Wars animated series or the Rebels uh, series or um, a lot of those those other ancillary um, Star Wars animated shows that are there. Yeah. And I would say um, because I'm pretty sure Disney owned Star Wars. No, maybe they didn't, because I think George Lucas there's Lucas and Dave Filoni, I think, where people they, they they were big parts of uh, of of the Clone Wars thing. I, I don't know. If, I don't think Disney had had owned the Star Wars property yet, but obviously at at one point they did. But but Clone Wars, the animated series, and then Star Wars Rebels, which I think Star Wars Rebels was after Disney got the license. Um, those are two of the best Star Wars shows that are out there, and they're animated, but they're mm-hmm. they're really really good. Now I'll, I'll be completely transparent here. I'm I, I watched pretty much nothing of rebels. I think I only seen like the first two episodes and then I stopped watching it, which was a mistake. Cause I know it's good. And I've been watching it through with my kids. Now we're like, I think almost towards the end of season one and they're loving it. And I think it's really good. So I wish I would have started it from the beginning. Yeah. But it's like a project. <laughs> well, it is, you know, you, you only have so much time in the day, yeah. right? You get busy and you got life and it's, it's not meant to be excuses, but I mean, you can't watch everything, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you have to pick and choose which stuff you watch. And so, didn't watch that, but okay, let's jump into episode number one, part one here, uh, entitled Master and Apprentice, because that's what we're here to talk about. In our yeah. next episode, we'll talk about part two. Uh, but yeah, let, let's let's jump into this, Chris, and let's uh, let's start right from the very beginning of episode number one. You know what I liked was that there was an opening crawl. I don't think we've seen that like in a in a while, um, and it, it was a little bit of a different opening crawl, right? It just went it was in red, went straight up, but then yeah. after the opening crawl, we had this ship from across the screen and i thought oh that's cool that you know that it re- reminded me of, of a new hope when you've got the um the starter story coming on but instead this time you've got a new republic ship that's, that's coming right across. yeah so, so i did i did like that a lot um and i think you know in in some of those opening opening parts of ahsoka um okay you had that new republic ship coming on you had this uh imperial shuttle that was asking to dock with the with the ship and then it, it, that was neat because they're like oh who's who's in that shuttle and they're saying oh we're getting an old jedi code and they're like the jedi so that kind of set it up cool and you as soon as they said that i'm like there's no way this is jedi this has got to be a trap it's a trap right. you know, <laughs> it's like, a trap. i i i just i my spidey senses were tingling i had this feeling that this is not this is gonna be bad yeah yeah and it is bad it does come out bad so those, and real quick chris you you yeah. mentioned you mentioned the opening crawl. I, I, I read that um, this was the first time one of the live action shows has had a crawl. I don't think, well, I don't think I ever saw that in Obi Wan, Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian. Um, uh, what else am I missing for live action shows? Uh, Kenobi. 
Kenobi. I don't think I saw that in any of them. They were all had like a kind of a normal type of title, but this one had an actual Star Wars crawl. Yeah. So that was very, that was in its of itself unique. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think they could all do for a crawl, you know, that kind of unites, you know, unites Star Wars as a, yeah. As a family, essentially. And I think Rogue One was the very first Star Wars movie to not have a crawl either. Yeah. Rogue One's opening was so unique, right? It just kind of like, it just drops you in. Mm-hmm. And there's this planet. And then you see this like shuttle ship or whatever traveling past the rings of this planet and then landing down. And of course, we all know that that is uh, Galen Erso's, you know, planet he's living on. He's kind of in quote unquote retirement from the from the empire and you know all that stuff and and um yeah so yeah very interesting interesting choice here to go back to the 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 crawl we all know minus you know it's difference flat versus going away from you yeah yeah not bad not bad so i was pleasantly surprised when i saw that so so our our jedi or they say they're they're not jedi so they come on and so they are looking for morgan um Elspeth actually to be free her because she's actually a prisoner on that that ship so um you know they kind of reveal themselves and decimate the entire crew and I thought that was a good review uh reveal review of them and they were very very um bad I guess they're not Jedi anymore but very very bad and they took out the crew and then freed freed Morgan so um that was a good strong opening a lot of action in that first one i did like the um i think shin is her name she's the apprentice so i yeah. like i liked her a lot and i liked um we learned his name balen school because his name we learned who he i didn't know this and i think mm-hmm. they had made an announcement about this a while back and i didn't connect the dots until just recently but so ray stevenson the guy who played balen skull and they put for ray at the end of i think it was part two uh, he he died in real life. The actor, the guy who played Balin Skull, passed away in real life. And after he had already filmed the Ahsoka series, his parts. I'm assuming if Ahsoka gets more parts, that he will oh. they they'll be replacing him with someone else for the for the part. But that was really sad because I thought Ray Stevenson was fantastic as this character. He was oh, so wow. good. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we 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 you know mention that 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 Ray had Ray Stevenson had passed away. I think it was this year, earlier this year, um, and so that was really sad to see because I I I, I know he's a bad guy, right? But I thoroughly enjoyed his performance in this. Oh, thank you for saying. I think that's really important. Wasn't there a text at the end of? I might be getting my shows wrong. I thought it read some text at the end of the episode that says for Ray. Yeah, that's, for yeah someone. exactly. Yeah, okay. that when that was yeah. him, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, gotcha. So that was sad to sad to see. And once I connected the dots, I was like, oh man, that's really stinks. I I really liked his his performance as 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 Balin Skull. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Um, so after they are getting Morgan off of that ship, we cut to Ahsoka on a planet. I'm not sure what planet she was on. Planet Arcana. That's the planet she was on. Um yeah. So in looked like it was a ruined, abandoned temple, and you kind of see her. I felt very much like this was a scene from, reminded me of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Actually, you know, she's in this old place looking for an artifact, and she drops down and look looking around. So Raiders of the, reminded me of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Also reminded me of uh, the Fifth Element because I think in the Fifth Element there's a scene look of them looking for artifacts. Um, and I had read somewhere before it reminded someone of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, like an opening opening scene where Star Lord was was looking for. An oh yeah, too. yeah, I could see, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I could yeah. see. I love, I love the way she took her lightsabers and like went down and cut that hole around her, and then she just dropped it from this from the uh, up above onto the, into the the chamber. I thought it was really really a neat little scene. That was good. Yeah. yeah. Um. So in in general, I know those kind of sh- those scenes where they're looking for relics or artifacts. It's done a lot in. Um, you know, there may have been some criticism on this, but I I like them personally. I like it when people are looking for like lost artifacts and, and doing that. But she's uh she was you know, as soon as she got the artifact and came back up, she was confronted by HK assassin droids, HK eighty seven killer droids, and um so then we get some action of a uh, Ahsoka doing her thing, doing her 
Jedi arts and dispatching of the the droids, as well as calling for help from Hu Yang, who is the Jedi droid and voiced by my favorite doctor, David Tennant. So yeah. I thought that was that was neat. And now now Hu Yang was this is the first time I had ever seen this character because I hadn't watched Rebels. So it was oh. my first introduction to Hu Yang. So I actually didn't know that David Tennant was uh, had always voiced him. So mm-hmm. So when when Hu Yang was talking, I was like, you know, he was talking a few times. I'm like, wait, that's the doctor. So I thought that was a good like connection for me. Yeah. Um, so that was good. Um, so Ahsoka is able to capture this spherical device, which we learn is a device that contains the map. Um, so she's got that. And that was her mission on that planet, apparently. Um, yeah. I'm still really I'm still actually confused. Because I don't know how they know to look for that map device on that planet or why they thought that the map would have the location of Thrawn. Maybe we'll find all that out later, but I'm still in this state of confusion on it. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. that that will, that will present itself. I, I, I don't really know why either. Um, I, I will say that the whole idea, this is a little bit of an Easter egg here because the whole mm-hmm. idea of you know, uh, uh, Jedi's using the force to help solve puzzles. Uh, th- this is, this is throughout a lot of star Wars. This, this happens, especially, um, in video games like Jedi fallen order and Jedi survivor are two standalone single player video games, uh, that follows a, uh, what's his name? Cal Kestis or something like that. Who, yeah. who you go through the game and you're, I, I only played part of the first one. I hadn't played the second one, but it's this idea of, using the force to help solve puzzles and things like that. Um, so this, this is, this is interesting. Um, but the thing is, even though Ahsoka finds the map, yeah. she's not able to unlock it, right? She needs yeah. help with that, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, kind of cool that they're bringing like some, some kind of video game, you know, reference there to uh, live action Star Wars. Right, there's something that happens in these Star Wars video games. Yeah, that is, uh, and I like the idea that there's this ancient world. Right, there's, I mean, we've got Ahsoka, but I, but I like the idea that there's ancient, there's this ancient world there of of temples of older Jedi of all these artifacts that they're discovering. I mean, I think that is really really cool because it just sets it up. There's all this history right there um, yeah. that they can go back and explore. So. And we see that we see that in Rogue One a little bit too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe it was on Jeddah. I think it's the name of the planet, right? It's got some old yeah. Jedi ruins and things like that. So you're seeing Ahsoka is a show so far that is building off of what they've done a lot in Star Wars, which is really showing how far back the Jedi Order goes, right? It's been around for a long time. There's such a rich history with the Jedi, but not everybody are fans of the Jedi, as we learn, right? Yeah, yeah, as we learn. So, you know, we cut to uh, after that, we cut to another scene on Lothal, which um, for me, that was my first introduction to that planet. I think it was probably new for both of us, but um, it was a pretty planet. They've got a lot of uh, it was a pretty city. Well, so so Lothal was a um, planet that they first introduced, I believe, in Star Wars Rebels. Ah, Um, because I I believe that's where uh, I think that's where. They find they 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 find Ezra Bridger okay. for the first time, I think, off the top of my head. Um, so in live action, this is the first time we see it, but I'm I want to say it was in Rebels. In Rebels. Okay. That's good. And so there there they're doing a celebration to celebrate the liberation of Lothal, I believe. And so we've got some key people there. Um, and we've got one person that we learn is key, but she is not there to help celebrate. And so when they call her name, they you know they call Sabine Wren to come and give some comments and uh, speak to the crowd, and she's nowhere to be found. And um, that was my first introduction to Sabine since I'd never watched Rebels. But uh, we learn that she purposely wasn't there, and she's on her speeder speeding to her um, place that she stays. And so. You know, they're trying to um, get her back to go to the ceremony, but she's not having any of it. So that's our introduction to Sabine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And we've got, you know, ah Ahsoka has a communication with uh, General Hera, um, who's played by Mary Elizabeth Weinstein, Weinstead. And which is uh, Ewan McGregor's wife, by the way. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. She all, sure it's is. It's all connected, man. It's all connected, man. It's all it's connected. All connected. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that that's pretty funny. So, General uh, Hera is like, hey, Ahsoka, I know who um, can help you out with this map. And Ahsoka's like, yeah, but I don't know if she's going to want to help. But it sets it up so that Ahsoka does go to the planet. Um, to connect with Sabine, who we learned, I guess they haven't been talking on, on talking terms for a long time, but. Um. Well, so, yeah, Sabine, Sabine, uh, from, from what I learned uh, at one point in Rebels was the Padawan of Ahsoka and then things didn't quite work out. And um, so they had a falling out and yeah. then that's why we see this kind of interplay between her and, and Sabine uh, from that time in, in Rebels. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So Ahsoka is sharing the map with her and saying, hey, I've got the sphere. It's got the map. I think it this will be able um, this will be able to help us find Ezra. And we need your um, assistance to help decipher and decode the map and open it up. So that sets up that part. Get some set up for the, this initial uh, reconciliation. Um, and you know, Sabine seems like she goes back to her ship, so she must have at some point, Sabine must have been on that ship as Ahsoka's Padawan and stayed there because that's what I got out of those of those scenes. Um, yeah, that so ship that that Ahsoka flies uh, is also from Rebels. In fact, um, Ahsoka first gets that, so it's it's called her T six shuttle, and she acquires it in Rebels and. Um, in fact, I believe it, it the 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 type of ship that it was was commonly used in the Clone Wars. Okay. Um, and then we we do see when Ahsoka arrives, we see Hu Yang refer to it as the call sign Fulcrum, which was a code name that was used by Ahsoka and other rebel agents before the Battle of Yavin in uh, New Hope. Okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, Sabine. Actually, she takes. Oh, by the way, this is not off the top of my head, people. I had to go yeah. up and research. I want to look up for Easter eggs and connections and doing my research because I haven't watched everything. I am not this. I'm not this knowledgeable all the time. So, the appearances are deceiving. This is not the knowledge you're looking oh, for. <laughs> you revealed your secret. Yeah, I did. That's okay. That's okay. I, that you can look behind the curtain. It's not a real <laughs> wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have all of, all of that knowledge. Um, but so Sabine. Sabine takes the sphere, um, even though Ahsoka says, hey, don't take it away from the ship, but she does take it, takes it back to her place to kind of decode it. And she does end up apparently uh, deciphering and opening up the map. So that was uh, good good on Sabine to be able to do that. But in the meantime, the evil, evil past Jedi, um, you know, are going, they also want the map. And they're they're on the way to get the map from Sabine. So we've got that happening too. Um, and a really cool, I felt it was a cool fight scene. You know, initially it's between the the droids and Sabine, but then we've got the apprentice Shin and Sabine fighting it out with the lightsabers. And I thought that was that was a pretty cool action sequence of both apprentice apprentices. Uh, fighting each other you know the apprentice yeah. and apprentice just like um and phantom menace at the end we had kenobi and darth maul apprentice and apprentice i like those fights so. always two no more no less right no more. that's right um yeah i think it's interesting to talk for a quick second here chris about balin because so here he, he's obviously pretty old right in comparison yeah. to his padawan right he's not he's not a spring chicken um and we learn that he was one of a number of Jedi who disappeared um, and went into hiding after order 66 came out. Right. So here's a reference back to the, the prequel trilogy uh, when Palpatine um, 
implements Order 66, right? And all the clones attack and kill the Jedi. There were Jedi that escaped and went into hiding. He was one of them. And I'm, you know, obviously that effect on him made him go bad, right? There's no more Jedi anymore. They've been taken down and now he's been turned by the dark side and now he's a bad guy. But very interesting how you see Ahsoka tying in things like the Clone Wars, Rebels, the prequels, the original trilogy. I mean, you're talking about a show that's really bringing a lot together out of the Star Wars timeline. Yeah, it does really bring, it, you try to integrate a lot of things, um, which is a challenge in itself to try and integrate yeah. that many things together and not um, get things off or askew. So we'll see how yeah. that, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, you know, with Shin and Sabine's battle right there, it ends with, Sabine being impaled by Shin's lightsaber. Um, you know, over overall, I think it was a good lightsaber battle. The lightsaber battles, I think, that were in the, the prequels, you know, were always uh, like awesome. I think for me, those were the awesome lightsaber battles. But overall, I enjoyed seeing seeing this lightsaber battle with uh, Sabine and Shin. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the relationship with Sabine and Ahsoka, I think, is important here. Now, for those of you wondering about the Easter egg reference or stuff, whatever. So I actually found a really good article on collider.com that talks about the Ahsoka episode one and two and the, um, some of the different things to keep an eye on, whether it's relationship stuff or ships and so forth. Uh, and it's very interesting, you know, what the, what the article says here. And so I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm giving proper credit where credit is due. Uh, but we know at the end of – towards the end of Clone Wars, right, that, that Ahsoka is the one that walks away from the Jedi. She says, I'm not a Jedi any longer. She leaves. She she leaves Anakin. It's a big, big deal that she leaves when she does, you know, later in the show. I know she comes back, but but later in the show, she so she leaves, leaves the Jedi, and she never finishes her training. And she's also the one, as far as I'm aware, is the one that cuts off her training with Sabine. And we we don't know exactly why, but uh, Sabine, according to the article, Ahsoka references Sabine's bullish demeanor and reckless nature. And I, I think the effect that Ahsoka, the effect that it had on Ahsoka of seeing Anakin become dark probably scared her off a little bit like you know does she really want to bring on a padawan with a chance of something happening you know what i mean sure yeah uh, so there's definitely some interest they also tie in mandalorian too because remember ahsoka uh, for the first time in live action appears in mandalorian season two mm -hmm. um and she, in the article it says she's likely hesitant to guide someone in the ways of the force when there's any chance of them faltering meaning going dark and this was was expressed in Mandalorian to Din Djarin, who's the Mandalorian, right? Um, but we'll get to kind of what Sabine thinks in our next ne next review of episode number two um, and how that kind of plays out and how that affects things uh, moving forward. But this the, the relationship between Sabine and Ahsoka, I think, is really important in this series. Yeah, that's good you bring that up. That's a great point. I was a little confused on like Ahsoka's her training. Um, you know, the the because she she indicates, yeah, she walked away from Anakin. Um seemed like she just she walked away from her training. That's what I'm I'm fuzzy on. Um the opening crawl says introduces Ahsoka as a Ahsoka as a Jedi Knight. So I I'm just, I would have to watch some of Rebels. Like, how does, what does Ahsoka consider herself? You know, does she consider herself as someone that's a full Jedi Knight now, that's completed her Jedi Knight training, or is it something um, in between? I'm fuzzy on it. Um, yeah. So I would say, yeah, I would say um, go back and watch Rebels. It's, it's a, so far from what I've watched, I'm like, it, it's really good. Um, okay. I, I, I know a lot of people really, really like Rebels, like a really good show. Like, think, Think of all the good things we've heard about Star, uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, right? And all the Trekkies who love Lower Decks. And I know you and I are just kind of starting to get into it now and watch mm -hmm. it and see what all the fuss is about. Well, that's kind of been similar in that regard with Rebels. I, I don't think I've met a Star Wars fan or talked to a Star Wars fan that doesn't love Star Wars Rebels. Okay. So. 
Okay. Take Good. that for what it's worth. But yeah, there, there's a couple other things I think here in this first episode, Chris, we should, we should mention, um, you know, Ezra Bridger and the way things ended with him and, and, and what uh, Sabine believes is his sacrifice to help, uh, you know, you know, protect her and others um, is really big. Um, but Lothal was very heavily featured in Rebels. So we know that, okay. that we know that's a big deal. So Governor Ryder Azadi, who is the the guy that we see in this first episode of Ahsoka, who's who's trying to bring uh Sabine out to to make a speech during their little ceremony. Yeah. Um, is was voiced by and is played in the live action by a really talented famous actor named Clancy Brown, who's been in a million things starship troopers pet cemetery 2 and a billion other things without just that's just off the top of my head so he's in that and then vinnie thomas who is um plays a character named jai kell who's a guy who says hey get up here and say something you know entertain the crowd basically yeah he's also from rebels and is now a senator on lethal um so you know some things to tie in here with rebels Again, this is I'm I'm getting this directly from this 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 uh, article on Collider. I think the article on Collider is really good. If you haven't had a chance, go check it out. Just search for uh you know Ahsoka episode one and two, Collider or whatever, and you'll you'll find it. Um, we also see that uh, she has a loth cat, uh, in her her little living area, which I don't remember if this is the same place that Ezra lived, but uh that cat is seen quite a bit i believe in rebels so that's yeah, okay a nice little a nice little uh you know easter egg there from that show um but we get a lot about we also uh meet um another character which we we talked about you mentioned chris that was that was played by um ewan mcgregor's wife uh hira uh, Hera. Yeah, Hera. So yeah, Harrison Dula. She's also from Rebels. We meet her early on. She's part of the 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 crew on the ghost ship, I believe is what it's called. We now l- learn that she's become a general in the New Republic. So that's pretty interesting. They bring that in. They also mentioned Home One in this, which Home One was the big one of the big Mon Calamari cruisers from Return of the Jedi. So oh. another, another great Easter egg there. When you hear Home One, this is Gold Leader. Yeah, um, you're gonna remember that was a ship that Admiral Akbar was on in the uh, Battle of uh, Endor and the Second Death Star. So lots of, I mean, there's other stuff on this article too we could talk about, but there's and we'll we'll mention a couple other things during our uh, episode number two review. But a lot of stuff, a lot of tie-ins with Rebels, a lot of tie-ins with um, Mandalorian and the original trilogy and the prequels, and it's just it's been it's been pretty cool so far to see that. Ooh. That's ambitious. That's dense to be able to try and do that. Well, apparently this this show is like Dave Filoni's baby or something like that. From what I read, like he, I think he wrote the first two episodes. I think he was directing it. Like this is he's kind of, he's kind of all in on this. So if there's a guy who mm-hmm. knows everything that's gone on in Rebels and Clone Wars, which he worked on with George Lucas and all these other shows, it's going to be this guy. Yeah. Okay, we'll see where it leads. We will because the cliffhanger here, right, in episode number one, which we don't have to wait at all. We just go watch part two, right, Yeah, is where Sabine gets stabbed. Now, when I saw that, Chris, my initial thought was I don't see them killing Sabine off. I I, I did pe- – people would riot in the streets. There's a lot of people who are big fans of Sabine Wren. And, we, we, and of course, we know that she's a Mandalorian as well, right? She's, she's, she's a Mandalore or from Mandalore originally, so we know that – She's got so she t- ties her into the whole Mandalorian, um, what you call it, uh, culture yeah. and everything that we're learning slowly through the Mandalorian series. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I didn't. I knew she got stabbed, but I was like, oh, okay, so she's just a just a flesh wound on that yeah. one. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So she yeah. was she was come back. Um, yeah. So what, so what are your thoughts, just kind of on this this kind of first opening opening episode? I mean, there's a lot to digest. There's a lot of things here that. Okay, you got to connect the dots, but just as a whole, let's say that, you know, not having seen a lot of the stuff that's referenced in here, what were kind of some of your initial impressions of first episode? Yeah, I did. So I did feel that it was a little bit of a barrier for me because I haven't, right, I haven't seen Rebels, haven't seen a lot of it. Um, I like Ahsoka, but my knowledge of Ahsoka is really from that first Clone Wars movie. So honestly, like there are a lot, 
a lot of the references i felt like okay there was a lot a lot getting lost on me and so there was a, a barrier for the barrier for that i did really appreciate like the uh the production you know the cinematic production of of how everything looked you know that yeah that that looked good um i will say that the in- introduction of sabine's character and again this is my first exposure to sabine's character but the introduction uh for me to her character i felt like um they're just trying to make her too cool and she's just like a really really cool character and she's just felt like okay she just like and she is really cool she was yeah. awesome in rebels yeah yeah but I, yeah and i and i guess i just felt like all right we get it this character's supposed to be cool i get it right she's supposed to be cool it's enough well that scene where she's flying away from the city on lethal right on her speeder yeah and they're sending basically the version they're version like the police right and these ships to try to track her down and she's just like she slides her speeder underneath that parked uh ship i mean that that was pretty that was pretty cool i mean that that really was like that was pretty neat yeah i guess yeah and i guess i i don't know it was off-putting for me just like oh okay yeah i understand well yeah i think i, th- I think if you watch rebels you, you kind of see where that a lot of that stuff comes from and then it's like okay this makes sense now mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it'll be um we'll see how the character of Ahsoka evolves because right now these first this episode and I think the second second episode too, Ahsoka Ahsoka's very reserved. Right? Yeah. So um Yeah, she's been through she's been through a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean she went through all that with the Clone Wars and then walking away from her master and then in, in stuff that went on with Star Wars Rebels. There she's been through a lot. So and you know the empire may have fallen, but I'm sure as a former Jedi, she realizes that you know just because the empire's quote unquote fallen does not mean that everything's gone, the evil's gone, and it's all you know gone forever. Um, because you know there was that there was that uh, that scene where she's on Corellia, or is that in part two where she's on Corellia? Maybe it was part two. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there, 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 there's a um, there's a conversation that she has talking about, you know, whether or not the 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 guy there that running kind of running the shipyard and the inventory and stuff was worried about X Empire. And then we go into that. So I think that was I think it was part two, but gotcha. um, we'll get into that on our next review, which if you're watching this or listening to this is going to be out within about an hour or so of this. So you'll <laughs> yeah. get to jump from here right to the next one and, and, and go from there. We won't make you wait a whole week. Uh, but yeah, yeah, very interesting, um, interesting start here. Uh, a couple things that could have been better overall, but, but we'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, I, I like the, 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 the cinematic feel to it. I do feel like it had a, an, a, an old school quote unquote, like original trilogy, star Wars kind of feel to it a little bit. Did it mm-hmm. kind of have that kind of vibe to you at all or, uh, a little bit of that, a little bit of that vibe. Um, I think for me, maybe I didn't feel it as much as as you did, but I did feel a little bit of that vibe. It didn't have a book of Boba Fett vibe. So that's good, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's it for part one. We're going to uh, jump right to part two here in about an hour as a time of, at the time of this, this uh, particular review airing on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. So be sure to stick around for that. And we look forward to jumping into part two and talking about that as we look at these first two episodes of Star Wars Ahsoka. And uh, we appreciate you all watching, listening all around the globe and the interwebs. Be sure to, again, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us there for all the latest content announcements and episode announcements, celebrity guest announcements, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Hit the bell for notifications. All that good, you know, social media jazz stuff. Most so. excellent. Yes. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, take care, everyone, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Random Redshirt Podcast.